Thank you very much for that uh, introduction. And uh, assalamu alaikum and uh, greetings from Colombo uh, to all of you. Um, so yes, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as the presenter informed, uh, we have a business in Bangladesh. I have been visiting there over the last 10 years or so. And, uh, you know, I have seen uh, how your country has grown and uh, now established itself on the global stage. I think many people, uh, uh, you know, this is the first time they are taking note of this and uh, are somewhat surprised. But frankly, you know, because I have uh, seen firsthand, I'm not at all surprised. Bangladesh is a really amazing country. You have, um, you have, uh, uh, you know, tremendous uh, advantages. But I think most of all, your people. I have been dealing with, uh, you know, my my Bangladeshi colleagues and you know other people I have met. Uh, I think I, I have always found them very passionate, very hardworking, very committed. So I think this is your greatest strength, and I I am sure. Uh, there is a great future that awaits uh, Bangladesh in the years to come. Um, so with that, uh, let me first say a few words about uh, um, HEMA. Uh, uh, actually, with regard to how we started, my, the company was started by my grandfather in 1948, as, uh, as was already mentioned. And uh, he actually started the company after separating from his own family business. So he started fairly later on in life. And he had four sons then who joined the business. And uh, they, you know, like all entrepreneurs, they joined the, you know, they joined the business, they grew the, they grew the business. And uh, it continued this way till uh, the third generation, that is ourselves. We joined the business in the... Uh, early 1980s, um, and by that time, by the time we joined, we were already seeing signs of some sort of disagreement, some dispute between the four brothers, or between you know our my father and uh, his brothers as well. So uh, after this was going on for several years, then the, they came to some amicable agreement and. Uh, Two of, the, two of the brothers parted ways and two stayed involved in the business. So, you know, for those of us who are, you, you know, youngsters and just joining the business, we saw firsthand the, the, the emotional toll it takes when uh, families have disputes. Rather than focusing on the business, they, all their energies go in terms of trying to manage their own uh, affairs and you know uh, so that was a difficult time so so anyhow after the after the uh, two brothers left there were two brothers remaining uh, then the mantle passed on to our hands and we sort of uh, so, the, so then there were four of us myself my elder brother and two other cousins we said to ourselves that uh, you know we don't ever want to have to go through this type of a uh, uh, issue in our lifetime, and uh, we said we will focus our energies into growing the business, and growing the pie, and that's where uh, you know our uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, initiatives, and that's where our focus would lie. And we also said that we, to avoid any such dispute happening between us, we said we would. Uh, our vision was to list the company so that. Uh, you know, if anyone of us wanted to leave for whatever reason, that uh, he would simply be able to sell the shares and leave the business. Um, so that is how we, uh, we grew the business uh, and then subsequently we listed the business. I became CEO when we listed the business and I served until uh, 2001, uh, excuse me, until 2014. And then I, then I stepped down, then we got uh, uh, an external CEO, a professional CEO, and I took over the role as chairman. And now we are in the process of uh, myself stepping down as chairman, and now we have the fourth generation uh, entering the business. So obviously when you go through your entire lifetime uh, in this sort of journey, there are many lessons that you learn. 
and uh, I would like to start by you know um, perhaps giving you some of uh, you know our lessons and uh, hopefully there will be some questions which I can seek to answer uh, towards the end of uh, the session. Um, so one 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 thing I would like to say is uh, you know like every business you go through a phase. So my grandfather started the business. You know he was the entrepreneur. Then uh, his sons came into the business, uh, and then it became then it became a family business. Uh, so even then, there was not that much of a distinction between the affairs of the family and the affairs of the business. They were they were very uh, connected. Um, and then after that, as as the company grew, we we uh, you know we started uh, you know several subsidiaries. We got into several lines of business. And uh, also, we had uh, some businesses where we bought in, uh, uh, you know, external investors. We had partners, joint ventures. Um, so then, then, then we, then as, as I like to call it, we were a business that was family owned. And then, in the last stage of our sort of lives, or, or li last stage of existence, as we are now, uh, we are a listed company today. And, but we are family controlled. Uh, so, so as you go through these various phases, the separation be between ownership and management widens. So, when you are an entrepreneur, there is really no separation. You are the manager, you are the owner, and uh, you know everything is connected. So, there is no separation. But when you are a listed company, uh, you have to have separation, uh, as uh, of course, as the shareholders of the company, you are entitled to uh, enjoy the fruits of uh, the valuation of the company as it grows. You are entitled to the dividends, and uh, you have the right to vote on certain key topics. Uh, you know, as it is put to the shareholders, you get to elect the directors of the company, but you don't get to interfere in the day-to-day -day affairs of the company. That is left. Uh, Really, to the management, uh, and of course, as shareholders, we are represented on the board of directors. So we, we, you know, we have a say in the important decisions. We we ask for accountability from the management, and uh, you know that that sort of distinction is uh, is important uh, and the one that we have found useful as we have made. Uh, uh, over our lifetimes. Uh, so, uh, you know, as you go as you go through this through this uh, uh, life cycle. Now, in our case, uh, uh, 1948 to now, we are nearly coming to 80 years. Uh, you know, obviously there are issues, and uh, one thing that we try to do within the third generation, which perhaps didn't, uh, you know, our parents didn't do, is that we paid a lot of uh, emphasis into managing the family. Just as you manage the business, you have to manage the family. So you have to, uh, so we have various things that we do together. We have a family council. The, the job of the family council is to keep the family united. You know, obviously, this is very, very important because if the family is not united, then uh, you know. Then uh, you have all sorts of issues. And when I say, if the family is not united, I don't mean just those of the family who are involved in the business. I mean even the extended family. You know, the spouses, the children. Uh, it's important that everyone feels connected and everyone feels united. So that's that's really important. Um, uh, and then also we have. A family philanthropic arm, so we do various types of philanthropy. So uh, uh, we have a family philanthropic unit where different members of the family are involved, uh, and and we try to give back to society. We we uh, we uh, support various causes, and that in a way keeps the family together too in a more meaningful way. Um, we also have. Uh, the next gen uh, council, and uh, that's very important because, um, you know, as as the third generation, one of our primary uh, roles uh, 
vis-a-vis the family is to make sure that that we we leave behind uh, uh, capable next generation members who can come in and step into our shoes and you know as i speak today as i mentioned we are now at the at the stage where we have several members of the fourth generation who are in the company and uh, we are you know we are trying to make a good and orderly transition from the third generation to the fourth generation uh, and finally we have a family business board so the role of the family business board is to for the family to speak in one voice when it comes to key strategic affairs uh, uh, within the family so when when we go into the boardroom there are there are there are several there are four of us who are in the board of directors so it's always better that the family speaks in one voice in the board um, um, and those uh, coming to that uh, unanimous unanimity happens at the family business board so so yeah those are the various uh, organs that we uh, that we we keep together we we also have a dispute resolution mechanism where you know if if there is uh, you know if there are you know disputes within the family then there is a way that we sit together we place the facts on the table uh, we look we we address it uh, rationally rather than emotionally and uh, we try to resolve our matters you know that way but we have all, always had a code within our family at least that that we will put the business first so what that means is that uh, even for family members who are trying to uh, you know i spoke of the next generation coming into the business so they have to pass certain uh, uh, you know there is a certain bar that they have to pass uh, you know they have to they have to uh, get into the family the, there is no automatic right of passage for them to come into the family member uh, business uh, so they are, or rather the, you know to come into him up they have to uh, we have a Uh, capable, and when they come in initially, they have to go through uh, just like uh, any other executive, uh, you know, of the company has to go through. Uh, and uh, and we have a very meritocratic environment uh, within the company. Uh, so some of you may be wondering. Uh, I think as we went through this journey, uh, one of the biggest. Uh, inflection points was when we went public uh, so as i already mentioned to you one of the reasons why we went public was not so much that we wanted to raise capital but because we wanted to create a mechanism whereby uh, any family member who wanted to exit in part <coughs> or in full uh, had had a way that uh, that they could seek that uh, exit but going pu- going public needs uh, preparation uh, you know you have to make sure your financial affairs are in order uh, you have to make sure that you have a basic governance mechanism in place uh, and in fact we we had already done that before because as an organization we said to ourselves and partly because of the industry as industries we are in we are in consumer products we are in healthcare so to do that you need to uh, you need to attract good talent and good talent will only come to an organization that has seen as seen uh, to be professional so we paid we paid a lot of attention to uh, managing that part of it uh, and uh, um, so at the time uh, so th- so then also when you list you have to make sure that you have a good board of directors you have to be able to attract uh, a good uh, independent directors into your board and again the uh, you know independent directors of stature uh, will not join a board if they feel that uh, you know things are not in good order so we made sure that we you know we had a board and actually we learned a lot uh, you know from the independent directors that we had on our board um so uh, these are few of the tips that uh, i would like 
uh, I would like to leave to you. Um, yeah, it has not it, it has not been uh, a very smooth journey, but but I, I would say part you know uh, uh, in this journey also we have we have always you know we have got uh, external intervention from time to time we have used uh, you know family business you know there are family business consultants we have used we have used uh, the advice of independent directors who are who have been on our board and we have used trusted advisors from other firms and quarters so through through the years we have benefited from this advice and it has it has helped us to navigate so far i won't say that we haven't had our share of disputes every family has the our share of disputes but we have been able to resolve them in a uh, in a way that has allowed us to stay together and uh, i think as we pass on to the fourth generation one of the things that we left behind uh, 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 you know fairly earlier on is we we have a very uh, clear uh, vision for the company we have very clear values for the company and there are very clear rules that govern the professional conduct of how family members and next generation will behave vis-a-vis -vis the company and i think uh, this is very very invaluable so that all family members uh, know uh, you know uh, uh, you know what they what they you know how how they should conduct themselves and what they are aspiring to and in fact uh, even when we when we when uh, even we you know the these values and these rules and the vision that we have we actually share that with the board and we we share that with the ceo and the management team so that they also know that the values the family uh, uh, you know have uh, important i mean we 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 don't compromise on things like uh, integrity uh, we believe as i said in uh, uh, the value of our people uh we believe uh, in good governance uh we believe uh in uh, you know high performance so these are uh things hopefully that we leave behind uh and uh, you know we we hope we'll continue uh, going forward as well so i can of course speak to you more about some of the some of the issues that we have gone about but perhaps i can pause there and see if there are any questions from the audience I, I i would i would be more than happy to answer so much for uh, the context and what you have shared um before i open the floor to the audience i i have one uh, question uh, myself so 2003 you were saying was the inflection point because that's when you went public now looking back today um one very big advantage for you as you were mentioning was uh, that's the time when you created the separate professional sort of management you had a different separate ceo who started to look at the operation uh, and also it helped you to uh, sort of let go of couple of family members who wanted to uh, uh, sell their shares if you if i put it like that uh, do you think um, that is the only way or looking back now uh, if let's say a family do not go into that path can they still pursue the journey and be where uh, a cohesive sustainable family that operates as you stand today is that possible or public offering makes it easier or is there other context if you can share a little on that please no no uh, you know yeah um, i mean 100% uh uh the going being uh, listing your company or going public is not the solution for every company and in fact uh, you know maybe 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 you misunderstood but actually uh, we had started this journey of professionalizing the company even before and we 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 were we, we were very careful about the image that we put out we professionalized the company we had built up a corporate image so that so that even even before we went public we had that image and obviously you don't have to you don't have to go public to 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 uh, to be a professional company you can still be a professional professionally run family business uh, whether you go public or not is uh, uh, a secondary choice uh, and if you are a professionally uh, run family business 
I think that is most of the challenge. Uh, if the market perceives you like that, uh, that allows you to attract talent, that allows you to attract uh, um, uh, you know, uh, business partners, allows you to attract uh, investors you know, if you need them. And uh, yeah, so, so definitely uh, you, you, you may or may not choose to go public in our case. Actually, the main reason why we went public again, as I, you know, just to reiterate, was to avoid, because we wanted to avoid dispute within family members, uh, and we wanted to create a path to exit for anyone who wanted to do this. Uh, hi, sir. Um, having been on the other side of the, uh, uh, you know, on the business in Bangladesh, by the way, I was one of your competitors earlier. <laughs> but uh, wonderful story to hear. Um, just, you know, I know it all sounds great. I mean, these principles that you talked about, family business board, dispute resolution mechanism, I mean, it sounds too good to be true. What were the challenges you faced? Like, for example, when you had the family business board, when, when you didn't get to agree, how did you manage that? I mean, there, there, I'm sure there were issues where you couldn't agree as, a, as one voice in some strategic decisions, uh, you know, when you were uh, uh, taking some important decisions as in, in the boardroom. So how did you finally manage that? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, yeah. So, as I said before, yeah, the, you know, you, you don't always agree. I mean, that's a fact of life. So, so one of the things is, first of all, you try to avoid disagreements even coming in the first place, by, by uh, being proactive, by sitting together, uh, 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 setting, uh, setting a greater vision for the company, setting the values of the company, setting the rules. Once you have these things in place, then the room for, for disagreements to occur are actually less. But still, disagreements will occur. So when disagreements occur, what invariably happens is, uh, you must remember family, family members mostly tend, tend to be very emotional, especially you know, in the Bengali uh, culture, even in our culture, we, we, we mostly go by the head rather than the, or rather by the heart rather than the head, uh, whereas in the Western countries it may be different. So when disagreements occur, you have to be very careful not to let emotions uh, uh, take over. So what we try to do is when disagreements occur over something, we tell everybody, okay, now you put your position on a piece of paper. Put down the facts. Put down your point of view. Put down the logic. And then we make sure that Everybody has a chance to be heard. Everybody has a chance to explain. And uh, most often than not, we have found that if, if, people are, if people hear each other out, if people uh, put their uh, facts and their rationale clearly, that uh, the other family members would go along with it. Because at the end of the day, remember, you are all trying to achieve one thing. You are trying to enhance the wealth of your family shareholders. And you are trying to enhance the, the, uh, the fortunes of the company. So that has been our approach. You still have uh, uh, disagreements. There has still have been emotional issues. And that's where communication is very important. That's where there has to be one or two members of the family who, who play the path of communicating who are able to go sit with people who don't agree, one-on-one uh, -on -one try and uh, you know, hear their point of view, and try and get them in the right space. So yeah, that, that has been our way of doing it. Uh, I have uh, uh, one additional question if someone comes in. Uh, one of the points that while we had earlier discussed and also when we look into the global sort of examples, uh, the real challenge or one of the big area of challenge always comes when 
uh, uh, sort of the reins are handed over to the next generation or next generation comes into the space and that transition. Um, where two generations, uh, it's likely that may carry different set of perspective, values and thinking. Uh, in your case, uh, uh, was it a, uh, was there any challenges that you faced and how did you sort of make sure that everyone is on the same value, same vision because you highlighted uh, the value part, the broader vision part in the beginning, very, that was very much at the center of your journey. Um, so how do you make sure that different generation as the fourth generations are coming up, so it's still everyone exactly is, are in the same path, same values or where individually one may carry a little different perspective on life, business, or any other area. So how did you make sure that it, it stayed exactly in the same space? Yeah. So, so look, I, I mean, this is still a work in progress. The fourth generation is just about joining the business. And yes, for them to work together may be more challenging than it was for us. But again, I, 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 I will go back to the importance of uh, uh, as I said, you have to manage the business, but you also have to manage the family. So when you have things off, for instance, once a year, we take three days off, and the entire family goes out on vacation. We find a nice spot, we have a team, we get some speakers, we have some games, you know, there's a lot of fun and laughter. And uh, so over these three days, the family bonds together. Uh, uh, and uh, so these, these family bonds are very important. And then there are things like philanthropy, uh, there are these type of issues, and, 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 also, and also we make sure that, uh, you know, that, uh, that, uh, that the next, that, uh, you know, uh, between our generation and the fourth generation, or rather so, I am part of the third generation. Between the third generation and the fourth generation, there are good in, uh, interactions and understanding. Between the fourth generation members, also they are given certain projects, so they so they get to learn how to you know to work together. But I think above all, every two or three years, we reinforce our values and our vision and our rules. So. You know these things need reinforcing and they need adapting. So you know what 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 was true ten years ago may not be true now. So so you need to keep sort of working on these things, and uh, um, we have to see whether whether they will they will be able to continue uh, in the way we have as a family business. But uh, we certainly hope so. And uh, and if they don't, as I said again, if they don't then uh, if they can't resolve their dispute, uh, uh, if, if they ultimately they can't see eye to eye, to eye mm -hmm. then you can still separate from the business. You can maybe sell off all your shares or part of your shares and leave the business, but you can still be together as a family. And that's very important because even, uh, 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 even when, as I mentioned before, even my parents' generation, when they separated, after we separated, we actually still we still meet as an extended family uh, now and again, and those family ties remain. So I hope that answers your question. Um, if we do not have any more questions, we will end the session. Uh, thank you so much. It's been uh, truly a pleasure and honor for all of us that you have taken the time and join and share your thoughts and thinking. Um, uh, we hope to stay connected from the platform. Uh, with you and hopefully engage ideas and share and wishing you and uh, Hema's group all the best um, in its future journey and definitely in its operation in Bangladesh. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you very much and good luck to all of you.